Hi everyone. My name is Katie, and I'll be presenting carbon tetrachloride. We'll go through ADME, the mechanism of toxicity, and the in vivo adverse effects of this toxin. Carbon tetrachloride, CCL4, is a man-made compound. Due to its high toxicity, it has been removed from most household products. It was produced in large quantities to make refrigerants and propellants for aerosol cans, as a solvent for oils, fats, lacquers, as a grain fumigant, and as a dry cleaning agent. Consumer and fumigant uses have been discontinued and only industrial uses remain. Carbon tetrachloride is readily absorbed after ingestion and inhalation, but more slowly following dermal exposure. The main adverse health effects associated with chronic inhalation of carbon tetrachloride are liver and kidney damage as well as depression of the central nervous system. As a relatively small, nonpolar, tetrahedral molecule, this toxin shouldn't have much difficulty crossing membranes. Furthermore, Having a log POW value of 2.64, we can see that not only would it readily cross a phospholipid by layer, but it is well within the drug-like range. After having been inhaled, the toxin will cross the lung alveolar epithelium. From there, the toxin will enter the venous blood and pass through the heart to be immediately distributed to systemic circulation. As previously stated, this toxin's small size and drug-like log POW value will allow it to cross membranes with ease, through simple diffusion. This facilitates distribution, seeing as it will not require the use of iron transport proteins or ATP to cross the various organ and cell membranes and ultimately reach its main target, the liver. It was measured to be present in highest concentrations in the fat, liver, brain, spinal cord, blood bone marrow, adrenals and kidneys. Once absorbed, carbon tetrachloride can be activated by cytochrome P450 enzymes, leading to the formation of the very reactive trichloromethyl radical. This radical can bind to cellular molecules such as nucleic acids proteins, and lipids, impairing crucial cellular processes such as lipid metabolism. Adduct formation between the trichloromethyl radical and DNA is thought to function as an initiator of hepatic cancer. This radical can also react with oxygen to form the highly reactive trichloromethyl peroxy radical, which initiates the chain reaction of lipid peroxidation that attacks and destroys polyunsaturated fatty acids particularly those associated with phospholipids. This affects the permeabilities of mitochondrial, ER and plasma membranes, resulting in the loss of cellular calcium sequestration and homeostasis, which can contribute heavily to subsequent cell damage. Among the degradation products of fatty acids are reactive aldehydes, especially 4-hydroxynonanol which can bind easily to the functional groups of proteins and inhibit important enzyme activities. CCL4 intoxication also leads to hypomethylation of cellular components. In the case of RNA, the outcome is thought to be inhibition of protein synthesis, and in the case of phospholipids, it plays a role in the inhibition of lipoprotein secretion. No one of these processes per se is considered the ultimate cause of CCL4-induced cell death. It is by synergistic cooperation that they achieve a fatal outcome, provided the toxicant acts in a high single dose, or over longer periods of time at lower doses. The trichloromethyl radical may undergo several reactions, including direct binding to microsomal lipids and proteins, addition of a proton and an electron to form chloroform, dimerization to form hexachloroethane, and further reductive dechlorination to form carbon monoxide. The trichloromethyl peroxy radical decomposes to form phosgene. Carbon tetrachloride metabolism occurs primarily in the liver, although it may also occur in other tissues. 
Little is known of its metabolism in humans, but in rats and mice, cytochrome P450-2E1 is primarily responsible for the bioactivation of carbon tetrachloride. Studies in human liver microsomes have shown that cytochrome P2E1 is the major human enzyme responsible for carbon tetrachloride activation at lower, environmentally relevant levels. Animal studies have shown that roughly 35 to 75 percent of absorbed carbon tetrachloride leaves the body through exhalation. CCL302, one of the aforementioned radicals, may be composed of formed phosgene. Phosgene may be detoxified by reacting with water, glutathione, or cysteine, to form carbon dioxide. 20 to 60 percent is excreted through defecation, and relatively low amounts in the urine. Exhalation is the dominant mode of excretion, and animal studies show that nearly all of the material in expired air is, in fact, parent carbon tetrachloride, with only small amounts of carbon dioxide. This is logical, considering that one does not convert all of the absorbed carbon tetrachloride into harsh radicals. And of the portion that is, only a fraction of that will in turn be converted into phosgene and finally, CO2. Animal studies have also suggested that it could take weeks for the last remnants of the toxin to be eliminated, especially the fraction that has entered the body fat. As we have discussed, carbon tetrachloride is the parent toxin that is activated by cytochrome P450 enzymes to form the trichloromethyl radical. Experimental data has indicated that the first step involves homolytic cleavage of one carbon chlorine bond in carbon tetrachloride to yield a free chloride ion, and the trichloromethyl radical, which acts as the effector toxin. The liver is the most sensitive target organ following inhalation or ingestion of carbon tetrachloride in animals. Hepatocytes are the chief functional cells of the liver and perform a wide array of metabolic, endocrine, and secretory functions. Roughly 80% of the mass of the liver is contributed by hepatocytes, and it can precisely regulate its growth and mass. Following hepatocyte loss, due to chemical injury, it triggers hepatocyte replication, while enlarged liver mass is corrected by apoptosis. Hepatocytes have a great replicative capacity and are capable of repopulating the liver. This will now be illustrated through interpretive synchronized swimming. This toxin can affect the body in different ways depending on length and route of exposure. In mild cases, the liver becomes swollen and tender, and fat builds up inside the organ. In severe cases, liver cells may be damaged or destroyed, leading to a decrease in liver function. Such effects are usually reversible, if exposure is not too high or too long. The kidney is also sensitive to carbon tetrachloride. Less urine may be formed, leading to a buildup of water in the body, especially in the lungs, and buildup of waste products in the blood. Kidney failure often was a main cause of death in people who died after very high exposure to carbon tetrachloride. Long-term breathing exposure to carbon tetrachloride worsened age-related kidney disease in rats. Fortunately, if injuries to the liver and kidney are not too severe, these effects eventually disappear after exposure stops as rapid hepatocyte regulation will regenerate the damaged cells of the affected area in the liver. The kidneys are also capable of cell repair, just at a lower efficiency. Function usually returns to normal within a few days or a few weeks after the exposure has stopped. Studies in animals have shown that ingestion or inhalation of carbon tetrachloride over a period of years increases the frequency of liver tumors. Mice inhaling carbon tetrachloride also developed tumors of the adrenal gland. 
Studies have not been performed to determine whether or not this toxin in fact causes tumors in humans, but it should be assumed that carbon tetrachloride is carcinogenic to us just the same.